let's go to the strategy now of what I'm thinking about as I'm saving my money in a tax-free location using whole life insurance policies now. Once they're fully funded, I can withdraw the base premiums in cash tax-free, no loans, and then I can move that money into an annuity contract and get lifetime income so I can I can prolong that money even longer and that can also get transferred into estate planning as well if i'm not mistaken the other really unique part about having a whole life insurance contract fully funded in your late 60s in your retirement years the golden years and all that is you can have what's called this buffer volatility vehicle so let's just say for example people in the room here most of you have 401ks and you guys got IRAs. These accounts are investing in the stock market, which has risk. You can lose money. So let's just say, for example, person A, let's do person A, we'll do person B. Person A, with your 401k and IRA, let's say there's $2.5 million built up. Person B also has $2.5 million built up. They hit 65 years old and they've retired from their work, right? From their career retired both 65 years old okay let's say one person has term person b has whole life and in their whole life policy maybe they were able to build up a million dollars in cash value and with this person they've been paying term and maybe they have i don't know like two million dollar in death benefit or something like that their big policy that they're paying for okay and then eventually that'll expire obviously and then they'll just reroute the funds because they decided to buy term and invest the difference. So they decided to buy term, invest the difference. You know what? Maybe I should say that this person has more money. I'll give them. Yeah, let's do that instead. This person, person A has 3.5 million because they decided to buy term and invest the difference. Person B invested and they put money in whole life insurance. So it's their and asset. They have a million dollars in cash value here. This person has $3.5 million in the market. All right. Let's say at age 65, both of them lose 20% of their account. They lose 20%. Right before they're going to start drawing income, they're going to do, let's say we're going to do the 4% withdrawal rule. So 2.5 million times 4% would be 100 grand income for person B. Person A is $3.5 million times 4% rule they have 140,000 in income. Person A and person B both lose 20% in their 401ks and their IRAs. So 3.5 mil times 20% loss, they lose 700 grand in the first year. At age 65, market crashes, 07, 08 repeats again when they're 65. And you can't tell me this won't happen. This can very, 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 very well happen. I know people who are 59 years old today that lived through 07, 08, and they lost over 40% of their retirement. And I know people that are in their late 50s and 60s now that lived through COVID and their accounts dropped tremendously and then went back up and then went down and now it's being a little weird, okay? So you can't tell me it won't happen. It will absolutely happen, right? This is insane. So this is a legitimate example here of potentially losing money. So this person loses 700,000. Person B, 2.5 mil times 20% loss, they lose 500,000. Person A needs to withdraw income. So in addition to losing $700,000, based on the 4% withdrawal rule at 3.5 million, they would have pulled out 140,000. So let's just say at the top of the year, they, they withdrew $140,000. And in addition, they lose 20% of their account value. So it would be 3.5 million minus $700,000 minus 140,000, right? Over the course of a 12 month period. So their account goes down to $2,666,000. Person B sees that the market is crashing. So maybe they were withdrawing from the 100,000 is their 4% rule divided by 12. So let's say, you know, January, they take out $8,300. February, they take out $8,300. March, boom, market tanks 12%. Instead of them withdrawing $8,000 again in March and for the rest of the year, 
because they just lost 12% of their account or 15% and 20%, whatever the number is, they could tap into their whole life policy that has a million dollars in cash value. So let's just say 2.5 mil, we lost 500 grand. So at age 65, at the end of 12 months, 2.5 went to 2 mil. So now they're at $2 million and they didn't withdraw the full 100K from the account. And instead they pulled the difference or maybe a hundred grand from their cash value life insurance policy instead tax free by the way so because both of these people only need let's say a hundred thousand dollars to live off of at age 65 let's just say which is probably not even the case roll with it for right now at a hundred and forty thousand they're gonna they're gonna get taxed on that 140 so in addition to losing 700 grand you're also getting taxed on the 140 so you're only netting a percentage of that 140 over here because they saw the market tanking and decided not to withdraw the full hundred if they pull from the policy they only need to withdraw what they need per month to live off of hence buffer volatility vehicles this is a guaranteed vehicle that's going to keep growing no matter what they pull out the money won't run out right in that period what's not going i don't have to worry about losing money in addition to withdrawing money that's what i wanted to say eventually the money will run out if I keep pulling from it and not adding back into it, but essentially I don't have to worry about losing the net one mil. Both have $3.5 million. One loss, 700,000 plus 140. So 940,000 is gonna, or 840,000 is gonna get spent. So now they're at 2.66. Over here, 2.5 became two, $500,000 loss. And instead of withdrawing a hundred grand, maybe net, they only need 80,000 to live off of. So they only pull 80,000 out of the whole life. So now we were at 3.5 million in total cash spread out minus 500,000 minus 80,000. I'm at 2.92. This person's at 2.66. What's the savings? So $260,000 difference in savings. Person A and person B, same age, same amount of money just split up into different accounts. And because person B had a buffer volatility vehicle and they know how to sequence their returns more efficiently than person A, because person A is just withdrawing money. It's all they have to withdraw from. Person B has the option where they split their 3.5 mil, 2.5 in here, 1 million in cash value. And they were able to net a savings of 260,000 preserved in potential losses. They kept it. They kept it. That's huge. So now let's say the following year, this person's at 2.66 and let's say they were recovering and you know we lost 20% and then we earn 15%. So if we earn 15%, that's 399,000 bucks. Good luck getting that rate of return the following year, right? If, if, it, if the market averages 9%, whatever the case may be, minus fees, minus costs, minus taxes, you're, you're netting much less than the accumulated value. Then over here, 2 million times 15% is 300,000. So we go from two, so we're at 2.3 million in the account that it grew to. And then in that year, say they withdraw the, the 100K, they withdraw the 100K, watch this. This is what I would do at this age, if I withdraw 100K from my 401k as income, I would personally then deposit a majority of that money into my policy, pay back the 80K and then live off of that, borrow out of that, pay the taxes, pay back the policy and then borrow it out again to live off of it. And then what, what what's basically happening is if you were to play this out, person B is simply avoiding loss on top of withdrawing money from an account that loses money versus person A, they're going to keep withdrawing money of whatever they need to live off of. But they're not realizing that when they suffer market losses, they're getting their account is draining faster. It's going to take a lot longer and a higher rate of return to make up for the $700,000 loss. And we can make the assumption that the market is going to produce a negative every couple of years maybe every four to seven years, market goes down, market goes up, market goes down, market goes up. So from age 65 to 90, how many times can I expect the market to produce a negative rate of return? So 90 minus 65 is 25 years divided by say five. So I can expect maybe five potential losses from age 65 to age 90, right? So not only did 
whole life serve this person in their accumulation years. Maybe they use it to acquire real estate and all these different things that I'm mentioning here, but then also in the distribution phase. And that's what I'm learning from this book, Permission to Spend from, from Tom Wall. And I heard him speak and he was giving these phenomenal analogies and historical returns. And he was just showing how, look, in anyone's personal portfolio, financial freedom vehicle, whatever they're building, having this, a buffer volatility vehicle, and then knowing how to sequence your returns properly, where it's like, okay, if you're seeing the market tank or go down, instead of pulling income from one area, you could pull it from the whole life policy. You could pull it from, you know, a Roth, HSA, right? And then if you have these other vehicles that we build along the way, like real estate and a business, we can pull cash flow from those businesses or from the real estate instead. And we're able to preserve the money that's at risk, that's getting those higher rates of returns along the way.